This video is looking at the 2016 Ordinary Level Section A. So there's four questions. The first question, uh, question A1. The graphic below shows the Irish Credit Union logo. It consists of two ellipses which share the same uh, minor axis. The drawing on the right shows the completed inner ellipse. So this one is already done for us. A portion of the second ellipse is also shown, or also drawn. Part A, locate additional points in the curve. So, and draw the second ellipse. So we're gonna try to draw that ellipse and then locate the focal points of the second ellipse of the larger one. So for this, we're gonna use our 60, 30 degree set square. They've already started by dividing this, um, the auxiliary circles up. So our two, the two red circles, they divided them up once. So we're gonna continue doing that. 60, 30 degrees, but you can use any angles you like. 60-30 is handiest. Okay, so once we have that done, we're gonna take each point, so each line, so I'm gonna start with this line up here. This line cuts the major auxiliary circle, so the big circle at this point. So I'm gonna go perpendicular to the major axis from that point, this is the major axis. Perpendicular to that is this line down along here. This same line cuts the minor auxiliary circle. It's the red circle, so make sure you're using the red circle, not the black line. Perpendicular to, it cuts the minor auxiliary circle, so going perpendicular to the minor axis. Okay, this so this point. So I'm doing the same thing a couple of times. So this line now cuts the major auxiliary circle here. Perpendicular to the major axis is a vertical line. That same pencil line here cuts the red circle, the minor circle. At this point, so I'm going to go perpendicular to the minor axis from that point, giving me that point here. So there are uh, two points on the curve, so we can draw in. That bit there, I'm going to do the same thing down the bottom. So this point here, this line, cuts the major auxiliary circle, perpendicular to the major axis. It's the minor auxiliary circle, gives me this point. Continuing on doing this, cuts the major auxiliary circle, go perpendicular to the major axis, perpendicular to the minor, again, two more points. I'm gonna work my way around. So the end of the minor axis, they say that they share the same end of the minor. So click out along this map. And hitting that point, same coming this way. Now just one more point up here to do, perpendicular to the major axis. Perpendicular to the minor axis from where it cuts the minor circle. Give me that point and I can finish this off. So that's locating the additional points on the carbon drawing the second ellipse. The final part of this question then is to locate the focal points of the second ellipse. So for this, ex uh, extend your compass so that it equals half the major axis, so from here to the center. But the point my compass on the end of the minor axis, so down here or up on top, what will be the same and swing an arc so that it cuts the major axis. That gives us our two focal points, F and F1. So that's the two focal points and that completes part A of the question, A1. Question A2 is a perspective question. So we're given um, a good part of this is set up for us already. So what we need to do for each point here. Uh, first I'm going to join the these two lines here to the spectator. So S is the spectator, so all lines are going to join to the spectator where they cut through the spec the picture plane, they're going to end up being projected down here into the perspective drawing. So that gives me those two points here. So I'm going to use both of them now. <coughs> so uh, Taking my lines here, parallel. So this line is gonna come down along this way. And that's uh, the top where it starts to slope down to the back. 
and this point here then is where it touches the back. So that's this point down here on the ground. So we can darken in back as far as here. And then the top of it, so this would be this piece up here. I'm going to join from the front corner, so that's this one, back to the vanishing point. So this joins back to vanishing point 2. And where that crosses here, um, so it's going to be straight line here first, and then it's going to drop down to the ground back here. And that gives us that part. A few other things that um, we need to do. So, sorry, I didn't read the question. Drawing on the right shows the plan and partially completed perspective. View of the goalpost, complete the perspective drawing at the goalpost. So through here, through that back corner, I can extend, so I can extend this out. That gives us the piece there at the top. And again, for this bottom corner, joining this through here. And we're gonna take it that it's a wireframe so we can see all of it. And that gives us that much there. And that completes the perspective. Uh, question A2. Question A3 is looking at solids in contact. The 3D graphic uh, of gym equipment below shows a hemisphere, so the yellow one, truncated cone here, which they call B, in mutual contact, and then you've got um, a sphere C uh, is also shown in contact with the hemisphere, all three rest on the floor. So they're also going to be sitting on the ground as we can see up over here. The drawing on the right shows the elevation and partially completed plan of the gym equipment. So we've got the elevation, the truncated cone, the hemisphere and the sphere. We need to draw the plan of the truncated cone B, so it's going to be down under here somewhere, and draw the plan of the sphere C, so it's going to be down over here somewhere. So we can see uh, from looking at the elevation of this, there's no hidden detail. So these touch at a single point, which means that this cone is going to be directly in line or horizontal from the center of this hemisphere. If there was hidden detail here, or if there was overlapping or something like that, we would know that one is in front of the other one. But as there's no hidden detail here, they touch at a point, that means that they are horizontal to each other. So I can take a horizontal line from the center of the hemisphere out along here and the center for the truncated cone is going to be there. Center for the truncated cone is going to be directly below where it is in the elevation, so projecting this line vertically down. The radius, so this is going to appear as two circles, one for the top of it and one for the base. The diameter of the radius for the base we already have from the center point out to here and the radius for the top of it is going to be this distance here from the center out to the side. So just using uh, a compass, draw these in. And that is the, the base of it. And now we need to do the top of the truncated cone as well. And that uh, completes part A of this, so to draw the truncated cone B. So this circle here is what this looks like when it's caught, and this circle is what the base looks like um, when it's down there. The next part of this is uh, draw the plan of sphere C. So we have our sphere, it's in this position. We need to find what it looks like when it's down here. To do this, we need to do one thing first, okay? And we need to see what this looks like um, at the moment we can't see where it's touching it. So we don't know how far out this is going to be. So what we need to do first, is we need to add the radius of this to the radius of this and swing an arc from here. Because then we'll know what it looks like if this was after moving around so that we could see exactly where it touches it. So we're gonna add the radius of this to the radius of this and swing an arc. That'll cut up here somewhere and that'll tell us what we're gonna do next. So I'm just measuring the radius. I'm adding that on to the radius of the other one of the hemisphere. 
and I'm going to swing that now around that up until it touches up here somewhere and this point here is the center of a sphere if it was drawn off out here to the side where it's touching the ground and touching the side of the hemisphere you don't need to draw this part of it you do need to draw the center of it but you don't need to draw in the hemisphere up here what we're going to do now is just like it was over here in this position so there's no hidden detail on that part of it it's directly in line with uh, the side of the hemisphere so we're going to project the center from the elevation down into plan so it's down here and we're going to rotate this now around into its correct position so with the original sphere in the correct position its center has to be down along here somewhere it's directly below where it is in the elevation so it's down underneath there somewhere we need to find where that is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this now from this position around into its correct position this gives me the final position for the sphere so just recapping that, I added the radius of this sphere onto the radius of this hemisphere. I swung that distance until it touched the horizontal line. The reason I'm doing it to the horizontal line is the sphere hasn't gotten any bigger. It's just after moving sideways. So it's still going to be the same height off the ground. Once I have that done, I'm going to locate that center. I find that same center down in plan. So that's here. You could put the sphere there if you want, but you don't need to. And now I'm going to rotate this then. So I'm basically rolling the ball around the side of the hemisphere and this gives me that center. So that done, then all you need to do to finish this off is draw uh, the sphere in plan. That's the sphere in plan. There's going to be hidden detail on part of this so we're just going to, you can trace over the green lines or use your compass and it's hidden detail in here and that completes uh, question A3. The final question is uh, question A4 and this is an orthographic projection question. So the image below shows a house with a solar panel located on its roof. Uh, the, plan uh, the plan, the partially completed elevation and partially completed end view of the house and solar panel are also given. Uh, complete the elevation and of the house and solar panel and then complete the end view. So we the plan is finished, the elevation is not and the end view is not. So I'm going to start by drawing or finishing off the elevation. So I'm going to start by drawing uh, this line here. So this is a slope. So this is the sloping part of the house. Just like we've got the slope at the back. This is the top. So this is like the ridge, the very top of your house. This is where it's sloping up on one side. And that needs to slope down again on this side here also. So this is sloping this way. The other side is already there and the hidden detail is already there in the back of it. So the final part that needs to go onto this is the rest of the solar panel. So the solar panel is projected. So we can take this corner here, project that one up. And that's going to be the top top left corner. So we already have the top line, so I'm just going to extend that one over a little bit further until it touches off that. Same for the bottom corner, this line is going to project up along this way. That comes over as far as there, and then I can take this line up along that way. And that's the elevation completed. So I've just put in this one line here, I've extended this line and this line and drawn a sloping line here. So this one we already have the both points for. This one we need the for here we need to locate these two. So by extending that one up and projecting that one up also. So for the end view, uh, we're going to have to project lines up, uh, across and up here first. So they've put in uh, a line projection line so everything must come over to this line first before it is rotated up so first off I'm going to find so we're looking in this way at it from the right hand side so I'm going to find what we see from that side first so to do that I'm going to take this edge over to here with your compass right 
rotate this up and project up along here. So we rotated that around the height. So this corner here, if we follow that up to the elevation, is going to be this corner. The height's going to stay the same. I can just project that height across. That gives me this point here. <coughs> so that line and vertical line here. So with that, we all that also gives us this front edge. So that's going to be going from here across to here. So you can darken that line in as well. So we've uh, it's now starting to look a bit more like what it should. So we've drawn in the gable, the end of this here, and just this front face. Now what we need to do is we need to put on the solar panel. So again, taking each point in turn, they've already brought up this corner. So let's take up the other one from the top as well. So this is going to come across to our rotation line, point for compass on that point, and swing it around. Project this up into the end view, and the height always stays the same between elevation and end view. Resting this across, so that's a dark line as far as there. Going to do the same thing for the point, the next point down. So we'll take this one, project this across, rotate it around. So it's going to be somewhere up there along this line. The height, as we said previously, stays the same. So this comes across here, giving it that point, joining those two together starting to form it now and final point that we need to take across for the solar panel so that finishes out the solar panel uh, few other bits that need to go on to this is hidden detail. So just like we have hidden detail here for that back edge, which is the one kind of back here where the, the gutter is on the house. So we're going to have hidden detail running across this part. And then we're also going to have hidden detail for this back corner. So going straight down on the back corner, you're going to have hidden detail and for this line sloping down at the back. So I'm going to project this corner up into the end view. So this is a hidden detail line running up along here. And then hidden detail line for the slope of the roof also. And that completes this question and section A from 2016.